I'm going to begin with a question that I think is you, you've no doubt been asked several times, but it will help to lead in, okay. which is you've created or you're working with a character who is a real human being who mm -hmm. is part you, part Colin. Yeah. What particular challenges does that pose? Um, I think it certainly gives you a real sense of responsibility. Um, you know, I was very aware that this wasn't just a character that a writer had dreamt up in their bedroom, you know, this is a real person. Um, and we're dealing with real people's lives um, at the risk of sounding, at the risk of sounding pretentious, you know, that, that, that there, is a, there is a real way of responsibility um, that you feel when you take it on. And, um, you know, it certainly meant that I did things for this role that, that I never would have normally done for, um, for a job, I don't think. Um, you know, I lost a lost a, a lot of weight. Um, lost really quite a lot of weight. Um, and uh, you know, when it came to things like doing um, some of the waterboarding sequences, um, you know, it wasn't there wasn't really much of a decision to make about whether we were going to do that for real or not. Um, I mean, again, you know, I'll be careful here because you know, it's it you know, it, it, I could stop it whenever I wanted, and you know, there was no. I could never begin to imagine what, what it must have really been like. But that's kind of why it was so important to, to kind of uh, do as much as we could, um, as realistically as we could. Because, you know, as, as an actor, you, you know, you're kind of grasping at straws, really, when, um, when you're taking on a role like this. Because it's impossible, especially for someone of my generation, I think, to, to imagine what that must have been like. Um, so you're looking for every little glimpse, every little uh, kind of little flash of what it must have what it must have felt like to be there and to be going through whatever it went through it's interesting you talk about that because obviously you're shooting out in the jungle getting yes. this experience that's very different from being on a set of a normal movie sure. i suspect yeah so what i mean what was it like the experience of this remote set um well you know a lot of the stuff we shot um, in the actual cuttings, um, which hadn't been touched since in the war. So, you know, we're clearing real cuttings, we're finding artefacts from the POWs. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not religious or superstitious, but um, these places do, re do, they really do feel haunted. Um, you know, a man died for every single sleeper of track that was laid. Um, in some of the cuttings, tens of thousands of people um, died. And you're in these very eerie places in the jungle um, where so much death happened. Of, of course, you feel you feel there's a real haunting atmosphere to it. Um, and you know, the locals don't go near it because of that. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, you know, it, it added, it, I think it added a, a whole new uh, uh, sort of, I guess, level of realism um, when we were shooting. How does that affect the way you perform personally, would you say? Well, um, you know, when you're acting in a movie, a lot of the time you you know you might be doing a love scene to a red bit of sticky tape on the side of a camera. Uh, you know, you, you're often having to kind of suspend your your, your disbelief kind of thing, and uh, and you know having to really imagine the situation you're in. If you're in somewhere where the less you, where, where you don't have to do that so much, and you can just focus more and more on just kind of being. Um, in that moment, then, then of course it's gonna, it's gonna help you. Um, yeah. And obviously, you've mentioned the waterboarding experience. Again, talking about the performance, how yeah. do you think doing it for real changed the way you would have performed? Could you even conceive of how you do it without it being real? Well, this is this is the thing, and this is something that you know I thought long and hard about. Um, if you fake it. It's always going to be something that I've imagined. It's always going to be something that I've come up with, um, and how I imagine it would be. If you do it for real, I'm not going to really know what it's going to be like. Um, and I tell you what, most of the time it doesn't work. Most of the time, for a lot of the shot, it's it's not going to be usable. It's not going to be right. But every now and again, you're going to get a little flash, a little spark, and you're going to see something that's genuine and that's real. Uh, there's one shot that has made the movie. Um, where I let it go on for a, a second or a couple of seconds too long, and I just the hose comes out, and I just, you just throw up a load of water. Um, 
and you know, I think for moments like that, it made it worth it. Um, because in that moment, it's hopefully real and believable. And, and you know, that it might not work for everyone, but for that one person out of 10, that might be the thing that makes them believe that he was going through that. Um, and like I said, you know, it's so important that we do that justice um, because of, you know, the real people involved. And uh, so that we believe it when, uh, when you see him you know, years later still suffering. Yeah. Marvellous. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Cheers, Jerry.